It's Monday, January 22nd, and tomorrow, Tuesday, we will have the New Hampshire Republican primary. And I heard something very interesting when I was looking at something to talk about this morning. I heard a young man claiming that you have to have two healthy parties, whether you're a Republican or Democrat. You have to have two teams to have a game. And he was saying this because he deemed the Republican Party not to be healthy. He deemed the split in the Republican Party and the heavy backing of Donald Trump as a sickness, as a disease that has taken over his party and made it extremely ill. And when I think about that, I think that is a great vision, something to look at, something to think about. A sick man running the country. That's not what this country needs. We need two healthy parties, two parties that recognize that illness is bad for this country, that if we cannot get together and have healthy discourse, then we are destined for a terrible future. And so I believe that the last, this is like the last chance. This is like getting a shot of penicillin in order to survive this primary season. That's what Nikki Haley is up against. Because Ron DeSantis has neglected his duties and is not running in New Hampshire because he doesn't think he has much of a chance. So he's concentrating all of his efforts on South Carolina, which is Nikki's home state, but which where Trump, but which is where Trump is still the leader. And that's very unusual in my mind. So we have an illness that has to be taken care of. And I don't know how they're going to achieve that. So what we're looking at here is something that could be considered the final battle of the anti-Trump Republicans. And this battle is going to be waged on the snowy town halls of a state of 1.4 million residents of which about 350,000 are the Republicans. So ahead of New Hampshire's primary on Tuesday, the old god of the GOP is rallying around Nikki Haley, viewing her as its last best chance to finally knock former president from atop its party. And when we look at this closely, we must recognize that anything that is not a close finish for her in this state, will likely be really the end of the primary season for all of Donald Trump's opponents. Because the loss of bad showing in this state will send Mr. Trump to an unstoppable march for the nomination. A sad tale in my mind, but nevertheless true, a true tale. Many leaders of the state Republican Party in New Hampshire recognize that if Trump wins here in New Hampshire, Trump will be unstoppable. And they have made claims like this that Trump does not represent the Republican Party. They have said that Trump is for Trump. Unfortunately for them, they are wrong. Because right now, Trump has nearly two-thirds of the party on his side. And that's according to a national poll driven by the site called 538. And in the Iowa caucuses on Monday, Mr. Trump demolished his rivals by 30 percentage points, winning almost every demographic, geographic region, and every other slice of the electorate in Iowa. 
So those in New Hampshire were hoping for a better turnout, better be saying a lot of prayers, because Trump is getting support from people like Tim Scott of South Carolina. That's Miss Haley's state. And Tim Scott, at some point in time, was a political backer of Miss Haley. So what did she do that she lost him? Or is Tim Scott one of those who just follows the leader and doesn't think outside the box? Because abandoning a fellow South Carolinian is not, in my mind, a good example for the rest of the country. But maybe Tim Scott is pushing for something else. Maybe Tim Scott wants to be the vice presidential candidate on the Trump ballot. Would that be a hoot? So if we look at this situation with the clear head We know that Haley and her supporters must be desperate, and they must have a great showing in New Hampshire going into the next primary, which is in her home state. Because if she shows up poorly in New Hampshire, what chance does she have going forward? Zilch. So this is the last stand, really, for Nikki Haley, unless she wants to continue a run of madness without any chance of winning. So she had to do well in New Hampshire and then follow that up with a thrashing of Trump in South Carolina. But those uh, odds are monumental, monumental. And especially when you look around and watch people deserting her, like Tim Scott. So in any event, Haley is up against the wall now, and she has to produce tomorrow. Otherwise, that is the end, in my mind, the end of her presidential run. Now, I'm not a Nikki Haley fan. I'm not a Republican fan at all, but I'm just trying to cite this as a logical human being who's looking at the facts. And the facts are that unless Trump is convicted of a crime, he will be the presidential candidate in 2024. And that is a scary, scary thought. So I'll leave you with that this morning. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.